Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Virtual Sentai, a North American wargaming community contributor for the game World of Warships, and today we're going to be doing a review on the Tier 6 German aircraft carrier, the Erk Lohenhardt. So, I know it's a CV review, and a lot of you are going to say yikes, but why not? Why not? This thing, it has Stukas. Look at, look at those. Look at, look at this. So this is a German aircraft carrier. Um, previously, only the um, before the whole the whole German line was released, only the uh, only the um, the Graf Zeppelin and the Graf Zeppelin B were available. But ever since ever since ever since uh, the German carriers were announced, we do have access to uh, the Rhine, the Wesse, the August von Parzival as well as the Manfred von Richthofen, which is coming soon, TM. So, with that being said, let's go over the tooltips. Let's, let's see what Eric Lohenhardt has. So, it's a year of design, 1936. An earlier draft design for the aircraft carrier A, Flugzeugtrager A, which preceded the construction of Graf Zeppelin, had a different composition of AA capabilities, a higher running speed, and different hull architecture. Okay. So, with that being said, let's take a look at our armor layout. 19 in the front, 25 for armor belt, 80 for side armor belt, as well, 80, 80 on the fore, and then amidships, that's 100, I don't know if you saw it there. Uh, let's get the show up, please. Thank you. Yeah, 100. And then 80 in the back again. Her flight deck is 21, so that is very, very vulnerable to uh, HE bombs. So things like, let's say, the Furious and the Arc Royal, who quite literally at tier dump hand grenades out of their planes just to get uh, carpet bombing runs. You can actually CV snipe this. You can very well CV snipe it. Um, let's take a look at her survivability. So at without any captain specs, um, Eric Lowenhart has 44,300 HP. All right, our torpedo reduction is 16%. So, I mean, it's tier six, it's, it's tier six. All right, now let's take a look at her air complement. So her attack aircraft are Messerschmitt BF 109Ts. Um, these are rockets. I believe these are armor piercing rockets. Um, they have four in the payload and I believe you get six aircraft per run. So you get eight rockets. So you can get a potential of eight citadels out of this. Her torpedo bombers are Junkers GU87C Stukas. So these are torpedo bombers. Um, they are more famously known as being dive bombers, but we have them here. So you get six aircraft per squadron and two torpedoes per attack. Uh, max damage of 42,000. They go 34 knots, not too bad, but again, tier six. The bombers. Now here's where we get Stukas. So the maximum bomb damage is 12,200. That's a pretty beefy, beefy, beefy alpha. But that's if you, I'm guessing, that's that's if you sit it all, though, honestly. You get two bombs with six aircraft per squadron, HE armor shell penetration. You get 68 millimeters of pen with these bombs and a 71% chance at a fire. It's pretty big. That's pretty big. All right. Now, secondary armament 5.3 kilometers. So this is not a this is not a Graf Zeppelin clone. Let's be real here. This is not a, this is not a Graf Zeppelin clone. So let's take another look. You get 105s and 150s. So 105s are up on the deck. You get one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then you have eight by two 150s. So you get four 150s on the bridge on the on the starboard side, and then you get four four sets of 150s on the port side, but take note that you do not get access to the 105s on this side. So no 105s, so if you're gonna, if you get into a secondary situation, um, it's definitely the, uh, the starboard side that you want to present your uh, two people. So let's take a look here at how we would uh, spec this captain. So there's a couple of ways that I've seen this spec, but I wanna kinda just see, I wanna see it through I want to see what happens with an IFHE. I want to see what I want to see what the range is for full secondary builds. So we have 
So I just want to take a look at the range here. This is this is just for ships and giggles, we'll say. So you get a 6.3 maximum range. This is not a secondary carrier like the Graf Zeppelin is. So take a look here, 6.3, 6.3. This will BFT, AFT, and manual secondaries. Um, let's take a look at our, at our compositions. We can't put any secondary modules on this, except for this right here. But this is only survivability. So again, Eric Lewinhart is not a secondary carrier. So we will be actually switching this captain out for our Graf Zeppelin captain. So let's take a look here what I take on my 19 point German CB captain. So I take concealment, I take HP, I take aircraft armor, torque acceleration, improved engines to go faster, I take adrenaline rush because you're going to be running into flak, you may as well go as fast as you can, right? Improved engine boost, so we got a 10% increase on that. Air supremacy for resto time of minus 5% because infinite plane works, right? Great design. And then last gasp. This is big. This is big. Last gasp is always big. It was especially big on carries like the Indomitable, but this does not have the, um, the ability to zoom around, I guess. So we're going to take a look here. And as you've noticed, I've chosen to go with... Uh, I should probably end up changing this out for torpedoes because we don't actually have AP bombers. And that was, a, that was a social media notification. Sweet. But anyways, we're going to upload this anyway. <laughs> it's a quick and dirty, it's a quick and dirty uh, review, guys. But uh, we're going to specialize into our torpedoes here. Um, exterior. We're going to go like this. But actually, you know what? I completely forgot. We're going to go through the rest of our AA, de AA defense. So maximum range of 5.2 kilometers. Um, we got 20 mils, 37s, and 105s. So again, the 105s are going to be your flag, 37s are in dual mounts, and then you have the 20 mils that are just chilling here. Alright, so you have like 8 of them, but then you have 11 dual mounts of 37s, which are right here, and then you have your 105s, which are your dual purpose. Maneuverability, she goes thir almost 38 knots with the flag on, which is kind of, that's, that's pretty speedy. And then her concealment, 11.8, and this is with a concealment, uh, this is with concealment spec captain. So, with that being said, Let's go over the, uh, the flags that I've used. So I'm going full damage, full speed, full defense. All right? So we're taking fire chances as well as torpedoes. Um, what, all, what else we're going to be taking is econ flags, because why not? And we do have that special, special camo on here. So take a look right here. The Iron Cross which I am quite a fan of. I do like this. I like how it looks. I like how sleek the black is. With the, the red stripe, it, it pops. Especially on other ships. The Iron Cross camo on other, on other German carriers, it pops. But anyways, let's take it into a game. Um, remember, when you're a tier six carrier, you can either get the best, which would be a tier, a tier six, seven game, or, or you get up tiered into tier eight. So remember that. Even when you're up tiered into tier 8, you can get absolutely crushed. So, let's see, we got quite a few... We got quite a few uh, battleships in queue, which would be prime for us. Let's see if we can get a game soon. Uh, matchmaking take like even though we have this many people in queue, matchmaking always takes a while. All right, come on, come on, let's get a game. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. Man. Imagine, okay, there we go. It almost takes a minute for us to get into a game here. <laughs> Unreal. But uh, let's see what kind of matchmaking um, the Ouija matchmaker has given us. Ooh, we got five, six, seven matchmaking. That is a prime for us. Hmm. So this is actually really nice. Um, we're gonna, let's see, we're positioned on 
with our top right side. This isn't bad. This is not bad at all. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take our rocket planes out first. Because remember, these are armor-piercing rocket planes. So our targets are going to be the Piotr Veliki, the New Mexico, as well as the Colorado. Um, Furtaka as well. That's going to be very, very, very... Um, it's going to be very vulnerable to our, our aircraft. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we're going after ships that have low um, AA ratings that are going to be forced to stay with their teammates um, to provide overlapping AA. This is about target selection. And since we are mid-tier in this carrier, um, we need to be very, very, very specific about our target selection. If we are not, we can and will suffer in the late game. Now, for those of you who don't, haven't played carriers before, I did do a pre-drop there. And you're probably thinking, but Senpai, you just dropped aircraft into, um, into the sea. Why did you do that? Well, I'm actually saving aircraft for the late game. So that means I'm saving my aircraft so I can get strikes off all game. It's, a lot of people think, oh, this is, a, this is a good way of saving your air arm, because usually you'll only be able to get one or two strikes in on a target before the AA damage gets too difficult. So we're going to open up on the Piotr here. I don't think we'll be able to sit it out or really pen him here, but we'll try. So it's three rocket hits for AP rockets. And we got 2.2 on a battleship. I'd say that isn't too bad, but it's not the most impressive thing. So we're going to take that out again because we did see the Helena. We're going to do our pre-drop. Send two planes back. Man, that rocket, that rocket dispersion just is not the greatest. You know what? I want to get in on this Helena. We are flying through Anshan flak, but it is DD flak, so it is it is almost next to you. All right, so Helena is standing still here. Let's see what we can do to him. A single Citadel, so that's about a 5k salvo on him. So respectable, respectable. We're going to take out our torpedo bombers now. So these are Stukas. gonna drop into an island so all right <coughs> so our damage isn't quite where we'd like it to be it does feel like Lewinhart is a little anemic in my opinion um, but let's see what we can do to this Piotr we're gonna engage him here we are getting through a little bit of flak. We have lost an aircraft. All right, we did get a drop off there. Let's see if we can go back for the uh, the Helena, because we can potentially punish him. It does look like the uh, the the Piotr did dodge our torpedoes. Hmm. I'm just. I like, I like the fact that I can Citadel Cruisers with these rockets, but I don't like the fact that the damage just feels really anemic with two, atta with two attack planes per squadron. It just doesn't feel right. All right, what I want to do is I want to fly out this way, and I want to get in on this uh, this Helena here. Because light cruisers are prime targets for AP rockets. I'm just going to fly right through this because zero bothers, just dodge forehead, and rockets away. No citadels because we aim that too low. He will be forced to beach here, so we're gonna do a quick re-engage. Oh, we're not, we don't even have room for it. So we're just gonna let this run out and we're gonna press F. All right, you know what? I just realized that there is a New Mexico that is quite vulnerable on the A cap, so he's like right around here. 
We're gonna send uh, we're gonna send our our beautiful dive bombers. Ooh, that shit too just double struck the Helena and the Mitsuki. Well done, well played. I think he'll get a compliment. All right, let's turn this way. <coughs> All right. Look at this, look at this drop circle. Look how small it can get. I think that's really cool, considering Stukas and their pilots in World War II were extremely experienced and, and accurate in their bombing. I think that's really cool, but, and the circle allows you to approach a target from any angle. So let's go right here. Eight K drop. Definitely not bad. Let's go in for another attack here. Because he is pretty isolated. I'm going to zoom out. We're only going to get one bomb off here, though. Let's hope we can get a fire, then. No, but we did end up hitting him for around almost 3k. So that's not bad. We'll take our torpedoes out. And we're actually going to position our carrier a little closer to the action. So we can get a better time to target. So we do know that this guy did repair, and he is still semi-alone. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to boost towards this New Mexico, and we're going to start torping him. Because he is a bigger target, and he is on our list of things to hit. Right now, our damage is only 20k. Honestly, not the damage I was looking for in a tier 6 carry. This does feel very, very anemic. But it does have a lot of potential. Probably in a sk more skilled carrier main's hands. This thing could probably shine. So we only got about 4k damage off of that. That was a big feels bad, man. And we missed the one. Like, 25k, I'm not wholly impressed right now with this carrier. I'm not wholly impressed at all. But we're going to go back at this guy because we do know he did DCP and he is one of the lower uh, the lower AA battleships out there right now. Fire on him. I'm gonna go right about here. And we're gonna keep bombing him. All right, he is not burning anymore, so he did DCP again. Now the one thing that I'm kind of worried about with this ship is that its ability to deal with DDs might be limited, just because it has armor-piercing rockets. We're gonna get those out right away. Did you get another hit? That's a 3k torpedo hit. A little sad. We only got 32k damage here, folks. This is, this feels very anemic in comparison to other carriers where I would probably be at about 60 at least by now. But our dot management hasn't been the best. Armor piercing rockets. Only 2.2. Again, very anemic. But then again, we did, we did try to aim high. Okay, there we go. We got a 4k hit there. That's not that bad. Not that bad at all. All right, let's go drop. Uh, let's go drop some bombs on this dude. He's getting really close. Oh, 
Oh, this Colorado looks like he's having fun. Look at that, three fires on him. Well, not really, I'm like, we're at 43K right now. This is an interesting, this is an interesting game to say the least. It's just, I feel like I've had no, no influence on the battle whatsoever. Let's get torpedoes off here on this Colorado. Couple hits off there. Nothing really spectacular. Armor piercing rockets versus DD. Overpens. Nothing but overpens. We did hit him on the tail end though, so that might be why. But at the same time, these rockets aren't meant to kill DDs. They are simply not meant to. AP rockets are meant for light cruisers. I mean, you can still get a decent chunk there, but I mean, it's nothing spectacular. You know what? Let's let's uh let's send up our Stukas against um against that Mahan. Let's see how he feels about this. That just happened. That just happened. That just happened. Okay, so head pats, head pats, head pats, chat. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I did not expect that. Totally not scripted whatsoever. Maybe we get a flood here? Nope. So he's gonna die here. Let's go after the Piotr. Well, this guy should die. You know, let's, go, let's just go clean him up. Let's clean him up. battle pretty well wrapped up we're gonna get our carrier into a because why not win if you want to win just win harder forehead so now we got to look for the enemy vessel so he's gonna be out here somewhere I would think we're gonna find him floating maybe around the one line very possibly we are detected by his fighters right now Visa is right here. Visa, Vesser, either way. It is German carrier, my friends. So, you know, honestly, the Eric Lewinhardt kind of surprised me there with that detonation. That was kind of cool, not gonna lie. But I don't think it can do that consistently. We're just gonna fly through this. Get a single torpedo off, maybe. Let's see if we can get some citadels. Maybe one torpedo hit. One, one, one. Yes, get, and we get a flood. 
That's actually huge, because considering we never actually get floods in German carriers. That's the first time we've used a fighter, I think, in this game. And there we go. We win that game. Let's take a look and see where we ended up. Let's take a look and see where we ended up. All right, so we did 77K in a 5-6-7 match, which we kind of had to work for until the end. We actually ended up first somehow, even though I think it's really just because we crushed the, the Mahan. I think that's the only reason we came first, all things considered. Let's take a look at the detailed report. Uh, 21,000 to the Colorado, 11,000 to the Mahan. Okay, so we did actually do a, quite a hefty chunk to him, but 8K of that was a detonation. Um, 33k to the New Max, Helena we hit for about 6.1, Vesser we hit for about 2.5, which is a single torpedo, and the Piotr. Now, final thoughts on the boat. Final thoughts, final thoughts, final thoughts, final thoughts, final thoughts. <sighs> Eric von Lohenhardt, if you're a collector, sure. If you're a collector, sure. If you're not a collector, I just wouldn't bother with it, honestly. I mean, it has decent matchmaking, and it's got a different dynamic from what the uh, the, um, the the line ships have. Um, but honestly, I just think that maybe it can, it can have some carry potential. Maybe if it had a little more dot potential. Um, but... And the uh, and I guess the uh, the AP rockets can really really punch out ships like let's say Royal Navy light cruisers as well as um, like Omaha's Marbleheads all that stuff like anything that has really light plating on its sides those ro these rocket planes will absolutely like eat for breakfast they will destroy them if you can get a good salvo off but. If I had to rank this carry out of 10, I'd say it's maybe at about a six and a half. I mean, we saw the detonation on that um, on that Mahan. We saw that accuracy with the bombs. But honestly, I'm not really sure if it would really be worth your time to invest in this. I mean, if you're a CV player and you're a collector, or you're a collector, or both, this would definitely be a good choice. Uh, just to give it a shot, see what's up, see what happens. Um, but to the general populace, I would definitely say that there are better carriers out there for you to learn on or purchase. Um, but otherwise, thank you for watching this review on the Erica Lohenhardt. It's not a bad ship, but it's not a good ship in my opinion. And I really do hope that somehow it gets readjusted, even though it's already been released. Um, but it just feels really anemic, even in mid-tier to high, in, in, even when it's mid-tier or top-tier. It does feel very anemic. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. We're trying to get our personalized URL. Um, or you can find me everywhere on Twitch below. My Discord links will be below. You can catch me during the weekdays starting around 11 to 12 PST. But otherwise, thank you again for watching this review. My name is Virtual Senpai, a North American Wargaming Community contributor. And thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Good luck and fair seas.